officers and any members of the public who are viewing the live streaming of this meeting. Welcome to this meeting at the, of the Grants Advisory Committee. This is our second meeting taking place in the council chamber for, and all members who are members of the committee are in the room whilst the majority of officers will be joining us remotely. The meeting is being live streamed out to the public so anyone present gives their consent to being recorded. My name is Councillor Sue Ellington and I'm the Vice Chair of the Grants Advisory Committee. Councillor Joe Hales is absent today and I will be chairing the meeting in his absence. For the information of members of the public, the role of our committee is to consider and make recommendations to the lead cabinet member for finance, Councillor John Williams, on applications made under the council's grant schemes. Councillor Williams then makes his decision, taking account of our recommendations. Please note the COVID safety procedures which have been laid out for each member on their desk. Can all members also be aware that any documentation on your desk or what is on your device screen may be caught by the camera in the room when you are speaking? Right, we'll move to uh, item one on our agenda and that's for apologies for absence. Aaron, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we have apologies for absence from Councillor Joe Sales, as you intimated, as well as Councillors Bill Handley and John Williams. Thank you. I can the, confirm that the meeting is quorate. Um, would those members who are here just like to introduce themselves, please? Um, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm Claire Daunton, and I'm the member for Fenditon and Fullbourne Ward. Peter? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Councillor Peter MacDonald, a uh, member for Dartford. Thank you. Can I also ask the officers who are present online? Uh, Jay? Hi, Councillor Linton. Yes, Jay Clark. Uh, one of the managers from the Communities and Wellbeing team. Thank you. And Vicky. Thanks, Chair. Um, Vicky Hoover. I'm a development officer from the Sustainable Communities and Wellbeing team. Thank you. Right. Declarations of interest. Do any members have interest to declare in relation to any item of business on this agenda? Not both shaking their heads and neither have I. If it becomes apparent at a later date, could you raise it at that point, please? Right, let's move on to the minutes of the meeting on the 28th of May. Um, they are on page three of your, no, different. It's on page two of your agenda, one and two, <coughs> page one, page two. Any concerns? Are you happy that I sign them as a correct record? Thank you. Right, community chest funding applications. Um, we have a agenda item four. Um, I have clarified that the first three pages in your written document are not relevant and we can move straight on to um, the applications which start on page eight with uh, the details of, of the recommendations and reasons for the recommendations and then we move on to page 11. So can I ask Vicky to present please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just four applications this month. Uh, the first one comes from the Eltersley Parochial Church Council, and it's in respect to repair of historic buildings. Um, 
They have stated that they have parish council support for this project, um, although they have not asked the parish council to support with funding, because um, a lot of the funding they hope to come from other grants and their own fundraising. The, so the project is for urgent fabric repairs, um, essential fabric repairs to ensure the church is watertight and retain the integrity of the building for the community for years to come. The church does provide weekly services and weddings, funerals, christenings when required. It's open daily for visitors and the school use it for its half term assemblies and class visits. They hold occasional special interest talks and concerns with other village groups and they hold a village coffee morning once a month. Um, a recent inspection of the church revealed the urgent need to undertake repairs to the church roof the masonry and the north transept exterior um, and also some of the exterior walls where water had gained access. Um, they will also need to renovate and replace the rainwater system. They have applied for funding from elsewhere. Um, the Amy Foundation have applied for £15,000. The Cambridgeshire Historic Churches Trust uh, they have applied for £3,000. The Wollstone Foundation for another £3,000. However, they haven't heard the outcome yet of those applications. And as I said before, they also hope to continue with their own fundraising to, to raise sufficient funds to get these repairs done. The, they estimate the total project costs will be in the region of £36,000 and they have applied for the full grant of £1,000 towards these renovations. Thank you. Um, did the district councillor involved respond? I see they've been contacted. As yet, no response. Um, they did. They did imply. Well, they put on the application form that they had parish council support. Um, when asked if you know they'd had any sort of previous funding, um, and if they had specifically asked for fund fundraising, they said um, the group said um, that. They haven't specifically asked the parish council for funds, um, but we have suggested that they go back and, and request that from them. But as yet, we haven't had an answer as to whether or not they've done that. And the district councillor? They've both been contacted, Councillor Howell and Councillor Wright, but as yet, um, no, res no response. Right. Members? Thoughts? Um, well, we do have a, a, a line in, in the Grants Committee, don't we, about supporting um, historic buildings. Yes. Um, so obviously it falls within that. Um, I guess, I suppose, normally we would ask for evidence of community involvement. I mean, they do say that they hold a village coffee morning once a month. Was there any other evidence? Let me just double check the documents provided. is looking I would say that personally I think this is a good thing to support I mean obviously historic buildings are very important mm -hmm. uh, that we maintain them that we help to maintain them um, it would be nice to see a little more community involvement if there's evidence but um. yeah I mean there's I mean there's they've said in the application form obviously that they hold christenings funerals weddings etc um, and community talks. We haven't got anything from community groups as such confirming that that happened, yeah. but I suppose with the, the type of the building that it is, we can sort of safely assume that they hold, you know, all these, um, you know, especially weddings, funerals, christenings um, that will benefit the, the community as a minimum. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I can always ask for you know a letter of support from those community other community groups if you feel that's necessary well i'll, I'll wait to see what my okay. committee members think thanks okay. right. Peter? um yes as Cam uh, councillor daunton has, has mentioned both in the guidelines uh, where we say we're prepared to invest in historic buildings and also where 
either the last committee or the committee before that who supported one of the churches for yes. repair of the clock and we you know supported the re repair of uh, church bells I think and, and mm -hmm. things like that so I'm, I'm happy that it that it's consistent with that and consistent with with the policy but um, not not a box but an and it'd just be nice to have a bit more background on on the activities but in principle I'm okay well I, I too uh, feel that it's um, important that our little churches that serve very little congregations are uh, supported and, and do I take it both of you are quite happy for that and that Vicky will ask when she talks to them for a, for a bit more evidence of uh, community involvement. Right, so that's agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Can we move on to Cottenham Day Centre? Yes, sure. Cottenham Day Centre. Um, they advise on their application that they have district council support. Um, they've put that this project is start up, or, although it's um, more of a restart of, of the um, the things that they ran there previously. Um, so Cottenham Day Centre been around since 1986 as a social club for people of pensionable age, enables members to socialise with their peers and enjoy a home cooked meal, um, two course meal uh, once a week, run by volunteers, which of which some cook the meals and some are drivers of the minibus, collecting members from their homes and returning them. Um, members organise their own entertainment, such as bingo and raffle and, and other things. Uh, volunteers arrange for outings, such as a trip to the garden centre or a trip to the river. Um, they've been in, and, and recently they've been in touch with members who've des said that they're desperately missing the group and that missing their friends and peers. Um, you know, a really important aspect of being able to to get out and about and socialise that they haven't been able to do so, um, obviously, in recent months. Um, Cottenham Day Centre, it's been closed since March 2020. Um, because of the you know, short notice of having to close, they had to discard all the food and products that they had had there, um, which now need replacing if they're going to you know, get things back up and running and reopen and provide the service that they used to within COVID guidelines. So they need to replace the food. Also, the minibus hasn't been in use, so they need to, um, they needed a new battery for that, a service, an MOT and, and some other repairs. Um, since the appendix was submitted to yourselves, we have been in touch with the group to give us some costs of, um, you know, the estimated cost of um, the things they needed. Um, they've said that the food they estimate will cost about £500. They bought a, min a battery for the minibus, which cost £145. Um, they've spoken to the garage, who have said that the service and repair of the minibus will be around £600, and they've renewed the minibus insurance, um, of which costs £468. So the total restart... Um, of, of the group was going to cost them in the region of £1,700. And they, I mean, they originally they wanted to apply for the COVID grant, but they were just out of the deadline. So we can only support them with um, the maximum which they've asked for, which is a thousand. Um, so that is the Cottenham Day Centre application. Again, it says the parish council supports them, but haven't donated anything. Towards yeah, the I spoke to the, the yeah I spoke again to the chair when we uh, obtained information about the costings. Um, they said that they they have received financial support from them for projects in the past, um, but they're not financially supporting this project at the moment. Um, so it may be that they can sort of push them on on that further. Um, but they do support the project, obviously, in principle. They'd like to see it back up and, and running. Okay. 
members? Well, uh, you know, on, on the face of it, this looks like a good project and something that we should be supporting. It's a great pity that they missed the deadline for the COVID grant. I mean, that would have been absolutely ideal. That's what it was for. Um, and also, they would have been eligible if we'd agreed for a higher sum. I think it's a pity that the parish council isn't offering them some support. I don't know if we know why they're not. Um, because it's clearly an important uh, mm. local centre, does good work from, from what the application says, and I'm sure it does. Um, I think what they're asking for is reasonable, and you've explained to us how they're going to use the money, so I, I'd be in favour of it. I think, yeah, it's a pity that we haven't got evidence of parish council support, but I can't hold that against yeah. them. I think. Yeah. Fair enough. Peter? Um, yeah, for me, uh, I do support it. Um, it is kind of a start-up, uh, because they've been out of action since May 2020. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's slightly unfortunate they missed the deadline for the COVID grant. But th they are where they are. I, I would support it. I think we should go back to the parish and say, South Camps will support it. We, we hope that you can uh, put some resources yeah. in as well. So on that, sorry, Claire, did you want something or? I, <laughs> it's all right. You, you popped up on my. Oh no, thing. I'm, I'm sorry. It's because I forgot. <laughs> um, so I think we're we're all in agreement that it's a good thing, and we ought to support it, but we would like to see the parish council make up the difference. Right. Yeah. Moving on to. Cambridge Curiosity and Imagination. Yes, so this is, well, we've said project type of improvements to community buildings and spaces, but it's more um, improvements to open spaces. Um, they advised again on their application that they have district councillor support. Um, we have contacted the parish council, or they have contacted the parish council to get, gauge their level of support but at the moment, um, we haven't heard back from them. Um, the project they're planning is called Forest of Imagination. Um, the Cambridge Curiosity and Imagination, or CCI, is an arts and wellbeing charity which was originally formed in 2002. It works at local, national and international level to build creatively healthy communities Children and young people are at the heart of the charity's work. Um, and they, CCI explore how their ideas and questions can lead the way in creative explorations within, with artists working alongside to support their processes. Um, their work is driven by a vision of inclusible, inclusive, sorry, accessible and creative society. They work with people of all ages in all kinds of spaces, um, most recently in woods, hospitals, libraries and playgrounds. So this grant will enable them to grow their forest of imagination. Um, this was originally launched back in 2020, um, was a successful environmental art project delivered in collaboration with two Cambridge primary schools. The Cambridge City Council Tea Team and Urban Canopy Project as well. Um, so that was the project was basically 18 forest inspired hangings or um, pictures um, from from their projects were installed at Wandleberry Country Park on the southern edge of the city, which attracted more than 500 visitors in a single day. So that was the project that they had last year. Um, this year, they want to create a more ambition and meaningful celebration of creativity in the natural world. The vision is to grow the original forest idea, creating a collective artwork that nourishes the ima imagination and fosters the connection with nature, which they believe, as we all do, is so important for mental well-being. The CCI aims to enable inclusive participation and engagement Signposting ways of supporting nature recovery 
for local people and also leaving a lasting legacy and the opportunity for further growth in the future. But the project will grow throughout the autumn um, with two large scale immersive installations bookending the National Tree Week, um, which is in November. The first on Tree Charter Day on the 27th of November, which will then they will display the beautiful arts work, well, artworks installed in Wanderbury, the same as they did in 2020. And then on the 5th of December, these same hangings will be installed on Christ pieces in Cambridge, enabling a wider reach and impact for the project. This is directly related to South Cams um, because they want to um, directly involve a new community of South Cams residents in the project. They're hoping to involve Shelford Primary School, the children and their educators, and, and involve as many local people of all ages as possible within the Shelford area um, to open up opportunities of involvement with some of the youngest residents in the area. So they plan to do workshops which will take place with children, teachers and families um, to be held at the Shelford Primary School and they will be contributing to the new creative work for the Forest of Imagination 2021, which will be installed in the Beach Avenue at Wandleberry and also in Christ Pieces in Cambridge. Um, they have detailed their project costings, which is, um, well, it says Shelford Primary School workshops are going to cost £500, art materials, um, travel, they're detailed, um, design and production of two new hangings for, for, for the project, the Forest of Imagination, two at 220, and the CCI's project management of one day, which is 250 pound. Um, so they're asking for 996 pounds 30, but they haven't asked for funding from anywhere else. Gosh. Yes, quite a long one. <laughs> oh, right. You want to start this down, Peter? Um, it sounds very exciting. Uh, I do recall, I think, um, some of the uh, displays that they put in Wanderbury last year, and the engagement for the youth, especially, is is very worthwhile. So it, it, I'm glad they're continuing for another year. Sounds good. Okay. I'm glad you've seen something. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, what they're doing and um, the fact that they are now going to work with um, Shelford Primary School, I think it is good. Um, I'm surprised that we haven't heard from them in the past. This is mm. the first time that we've had an application from them, I, no, certainly in my time. Yes, I'm I don't, surprised I don't that we remember. haven't heard from them. Um, I just had a question as well, just a, a point of information. Um, a 2020 Biomed Reality, I, I presume that's Reality Award for Social Entrepreneurship, the Cambridge Live Business Awards. Is, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Again, we hadn't heard about that. I presume in the past that they've had money from the City Council as well. Yeah, it seems that um, the previous projects were mainly based around the city. Um, I don't know if they've applied for grants, but I would imagine they probably have done um, to um, sort of involve those. Um, you know, city councils, based schools. Yeah. Well, we don't. We don't have. A, we have very few, in fact, applications for arts or music. So I think that this is. It's good that this has come forward. Well, I'm happy with it. I think it uh, sounds quite exciting for, for the children that are involved. So yeah. Are we generally in agreement? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, moving on then to Melbourne, Shepworth and Foxton. Okay, yeah, so this is the Melbourne, Shepworth, Foxton Community Rail Partnership. Um, again, it's improvements to um, outside spaces. Um, they have confirmed on their application that they have district council support. Um, the parish council does support that. Um, and they have provided uh, financial support to the group in the past. So, Veldriff Shepherd Foxton Rail Partnership is affiliated to the Community Rail Network. 
It started in 2013 and aims to develop links of schools and local businesses associated with local rail services to enhance sustainable transport links into the rider area. Um, activities they include recognising the key role of rail to the local community and promoting it as a sustainable mode of transport and also improving and enhancing the station environments and promoting green projects. Um, so this is specifically related to the Shepworth Memorial Garden, excuse me, um, at Shepworth State, um, which lies adjacent to the Cambridge platform. Um, this was designed, this area was designed to be left as a wildlife area, but it become, but it had become um, just a place for litter and brambles. They have started the project and in May they they cut back all the brambles and did a litter pick to the site. And this was carried out by the volunteers, as I said, in May. And the area is now ready for proper improvement. Volunteers will be involved in sowing a wildflower meadow to improve the bio biodiversity and also the look and feel of the station. They will work with the local school, um, Barrington Primary School, to produce artwork reflecting the new biodiversity and these works will be displayed in lockable cases attached to the fence behind the memorial garden. They will also be installing insect houses on the fences. Um, the British Transport Police, interestingly, um, have informed the group that well-kept stations have a significant lower incidence of vandalism and antisocial behaviour. Um, so that's a really um, you know, good plus point in, in improving this area. The platform Shelford, the platform at Shepherd Station is accessible to everyone and the garden area can be enjoyed by local communities and visitors to the station. Um, the garden tubs, the gardens and tubs will be maintained by volunteers and this has led to Gobia Thameslink Railway waiving parking charges at Shepherd Station as a result. Um, parishes which will benefit are Barrington, Foxton, Melbourne, Meldriff and Shepworth. Um, the project costs have been detailed on there, which involve lockable outdoor poster holders, poster holder fixing, for, and this is for the artwork that, that the primary school will produce, the bee and insect houses, um, the wildflower instant sunshine mini meadow, and some buddleia plants. So the total project cost is £990.93 and they're asking for the full funding towards this. Right. It's the wild, wildflower instant sunshine mini meadow that I'm fascinated by. Why not just say wildlife then? <laughs> too much information, I suggest. Anyway. <laughs> Peter. Uh, yeah, it sounds a, a great project. I'm very jealous of their free parking at the station um, because that's uh, and the station closest to me is very, very expensive. No, it sounds like a very good project. Um, and I know with other stations where we've seen these kind of enhancements, it, it really, really improves the whole experience of using yeah. the station. Mm -hmm. Yep. Claire? Uh, yes, I, I can't really add to that. I, I just echo what Peter said. I think it's a good application. Yeah. Yes, so have we, we've been unanimous on all of our proposals today. And Marvellous. Yes, thank you. I think I should say that it's because you have vetted them extremely well, Vicky. And, okay, and thank made you. made sure that we've got the information which we normally twitter on about if you know yes. what i mean yes um, i can't so take all the credit this month i did have a lot of help from a colleague so but yeah it, it's it's a lot easier process when when they're when yep. they're vetted properly like you say yep and when it's less than 28 <laughs> yes yeah. when there's less than 28 indeed <laughs> yes yes that helps enormously actually Yes, so please. could I just add as well, I think what really helps us as well is the way that they're now, the applications are now set out. Yes. Um, it's much easier to absorb the information and where there's 
and it's much easier to notice where something is missing as mm. well. So yep. that, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, thank you. I think thank you, team. Yeah, thank good. you. Right. Um, mm. I don't. I think that's all we have on the agenda, is it not? Let me rattle back to the beginning. That's all we have on the agenda. So I'll bring the meeting to a close and say that the next meeting is the 27th of August at 10 a.m. Thank you very much. <laughs>